Today, I'm gonna to show you how to export in all of the most common file formats in Photoshop. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. In today's episode, we are gonna be creating a really fun project. We're actually gonna create a little animation and through this project, we're gonna explain how to use all of the different commonly used file formats in Photoshop. We're gonna break down using layered files to make sure you can come back to your document at any time in case you wanna make any changes. We're also gonna talk about the best file formats for saving for the web and making sure your colors are accurately represented on a website. We'll show you how to save out an animation and how to save images with transparent backgrounds also for the web. This tutorial includes a sample image that you can download on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. We got a great tutorial, let's jump into Photoshop. The first thing I'm gonna do is click and drag my image right into Photoshop. Now I'm working with a JPEG at this point and I got a little cool project that I wanna do. I wanna actually cut out each of these individual cactuses and make them animate. I think it's gonna be super cute. So we're gonna do that in two parts. First, we're gonna use the spot healing brush to get rid of all the cactuses. And then we're gonna cut a couple of the cactuses out so we can put them back over top of the board for animation. Let's create a new layer here. I'm gonna to go to my spot healing brush tool and on this new layer, just make sure with your tool, you're set to sample all layers. This is so easy to do. All I have to do is simply paint right over top of these cactuses and you're gonna see they completely go away. The spot healing brush tool uses a feature called content aware that actually figures out what's going on in the image and fills in the area that you paint with what it thinks should be there. And in a relatively straightforward image like this where it's all just kind of pegboard, it's having a pretty easy time figuring that out. So there we go, just painted right over there. Now this is on a new layer, so I can turn this off or on at any time. So our next step is to cut out a few of the cactuses. And to do this, I'm gonna use the pen tool. And we're gonna speed this up to make it quick. So let's go ahead and make this layer invisible temporarily. We're gonna bring this layer back, but for now we need it invisible. Let's click on our background, and I'm gonna go ahead and go to my top cactus right here, and we're gonna use our pen tool. So the pen tool basically allows you to click and drag and make what's known as pen paths. There we go. And these pen paths will allow you to make selections. And we're gonna use these selections to cut these cactuses out of their backgrounds. Now, we're gonna go ahead and speed this up. If you need any help using the pen tool, check out our free tutorial, how to use the pen tool in Photoshop, or we've got a great pro tutorial on flurn.com that goes even more in depth. Now we have one of our cactuses outlined with the pen tool. I'm gonna to right click and go down to make selection and we're gonna feather this radius by one pixel to give it a little bit of a soft edge. Let's hit okay there. Now with this selection, I'm on my background layer that contains this cactus. All I have to do is hit Control or Command J, and that will duplicate whatever's in that selection to a new layer. So let's go ahead and grab our Move tool, and you can see now we have just a cactus on a new layer with a transparent background. And there we go. And here's the idea. Let's bring that up to the very top, Remember this other layer where we use the spot healing brush tool to get rid of all of our cactuses? Well, now I have our cactus back over top that I can move wherever I'd like. So we're gonna go ahead and do this a couple of more times, same exact process, and we'll speed it up to save some time. I've just cut out three different cactuses. Let's go ahead and take a look. Remember, we started off just with this image here. First, we used our spot healing brush tool to get rid of these cactuses, and then I made them invisible and cut a few out. So now we have three different cactuses that we can use to animate. Now, they look great. The only thing they're missing is a shadow, and that's what's keeping them from looking realistic. So I'm gonna double click right here on my layer. We're gonna go right here to drop shadow, and I'm gonna turn on a drop shadow. Now. 
let's just make sure I'm following the same rules as these letters here. So we want our shadow to be to the right. So let's go ahead and change our angle. There we are. I'm gonna bring my opacity up and we're gonna bring our size down and our distance down as well. So we have a little bit of a shadow right underneath our cactus. There we go. That looks really nice. And let's go ahead and just lower our opacity just a little bit. Now that's our first shadow and it does look good. Definitely helps out. Now I always recommend creating multiple drop shadows. So let's hit this plus icon, which creates another drop shadow. And this time we wanna increase our size, increase our distance and lower our opacity. And this is just gonna give, you can see if I turn this off and on, it's just gonna give the shadow a little bit more depth. So let's hit okay. Now we've got a drop shadow. We can just turn that off and on and we can see it makes it look a lot more real. Now I can copy this to other layers. Just hold Alt or Option, click on this FX and drag it to another layer. So Alt or Option, click and drag. And we'll do it one more time. Alt or Option, click and drag. There we go. So now all three of our cactuses have the exact same drop shadow applied to them. So you can see each one of those looks pretty realistic on my image. Now I would like a couple more cactuses, so I'm gonna duplicate a few of these. Let's go to our top cactus there. I'm gonna hit Control or Command J and duplicate that. We'll just move it right down there. There we go. Let's hit Control or Command J to duplicate this one right over here as well. And this cactus, I'm gonna hit Control or Command J and we're gonna duplicate that right over here. And let's just go ahead and give them some rotation so they don't look exactly like the originals. There we are. And this one too, we're just gonna rotate like this. Perfect. And now what's kind of fun is you can move these out around as you want. Oh, there we go. Just hit Control or Command and click on the cactuses themselves and you can kind of create your own arrangement just in case maybe you didn't like what was going on with the original image. There we go. I think this is looking really cool. So let's bring that over there. All right, this one will go right down here. And then, you know what? I think we do want one right up there as well. Okay, so there we go. And it looks just like a photograph, except all of these are cut out from their backgrounds and we can choose to animate them. So that's our very next step. We're gonna animate these cactuses. Now I want a simple, playful animation. So we're just gonna do a two frame animation where they're just kind of going back and forth. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Here in Photoshop, we're gonna to go to Window and down to Timeline. Now we have two options with our timeline down here. We have Create Frame Animation and Video Timeline. Video Timeline is great for editing video, but if you wanna create a simple animation, go to Create Frame Animation and then hit the button that says Create Frame Animation. Now our frame animation basically will allow us to create multiple frames. So for instance, let's create a new frame here. So we have our first frame and our second frame. And in our new frame, I'm just gonna simply make all of these layers invisible. So if I click on this frame and then this frame, you can see they just appear and then disappear. I'm gonna shift click the two of these and just change this delay right here to two seconds. And if I hit play, this is going to be a preview of our animation. They're just going to appear and disappear every two seconds. Now we're gonna hit stop. With this animation, I don't want them to just appear and disappear. We want them to rotate a little bit. And we're gonna do this by creating duplicates of the cactuses. Let's get back here. We're gonna just delete this second frame for now. We're gonna take all of these individual cactuses that we've created, you can see them all there, and we're gonna group them together. So let's hit Control or Command G to group them together. I'm gonna right click on this eyeball and we'll just make this red. Now let's hit Control or Command J, which just duplicates that entire group. We're gonna right click and make that orange, just to make it easier. Now, let's go ahead and open up our orange group and each of these is gonna get a little rotation. So let's hit Control or Command T on each of these going down. And there we go. You can see I'm just simply rotating them around just a little bit. There we are. Each of them is getting a slightly different rotation here. Control or Command T, and then just click and drag. That's gonna rotate these. There we go. So now what it's gonna look like, if I make this layer visible, and then make this layer visible, it's gonna look like they're rotating. 
So let's go ahead and start with group one. In our first frame, we'll make a new frame. Group one's gonna be invisible and group two will be visible. And then let's shift click on there. We'll set the delay to two seconds and hit play. And there we go. It looks like they're rotating every two seconds. Let's hit stop there. I'm gonna shift click and we'll just change this to one second and see how that looks. There we go. It's pretty fun. Now, of course, you can play with your animation here and do whatever you'd like, but this is kind of like the look that we're going for. Something for like a newsletter, a relatively simple, fun, playful image. And there we have it. So at this point, we've done a lot of work, right? We've cut out our cactuses, we've added drop shadows, we've removed them from our original image, and we've animated them. So now it's time to get into all of our file formats that will allow us to keep these layers saved. That's super important because let's say down the line, we decide, hey, I want my animation to be slightly different. You don't wanna do all this work from scratch again. You wanna be able to get back to your layered files. So let's go over the three different file types you can use for saving layered files. We're gonna to go to file and down to save as, which brings up our save dialog. Now here, we're gonna create a new folder called layered files, and we have our few different options. So our first option is Photoshop. Now saving as a Photoshop file will be a PSD, known as a Photoshop document. These files do contain layers and they contain all of your information that's in your image. And this is probably the most common way to save a layered file in Photoshop. Photoshop saves a Photoshop document. The only downside of saving a Photoshop document is that you can only open it in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and save a Photoshop document. This is not a bad move at all, as long as you have Photoshop or maybe your client or someone who's gonna be viewing this image has Photoshop, they're gonna have no problem opening this image. So we'll go ahead and click File Formats, Photoshop. Now here we have a couple of options. You can save this as a copy, which will just make a duplicate. Layers, you do wanna make sure that's checked. Again, these are our layered files that we can come back to at any time. And at the bottom, we wanna embed the color profile. In this case, it's sRGB, which will work really well for the web. So let's hit save and hit okay. A PSD or a Photoshop document will work well in many cases, but there is a file size limit to a PSD. You cannot save a PSD if it's over two gigabytes which may sound crazy, but nowadays cameras are getting so high in megapixel count, and when you get to working in Photoshop, creating smart objects and things like that, it's actually pretty common to create a file that's over two gigabytes in file size. So what do you do if your file is too large? There's another format called PSB, as in Photoshop Big, which is specifically reserved for large file formats. To save as a PSB, let's go to File and down to Save As, and here we're gonna choose large document format, okay? And you can see it gives the extension PSB for Photoshop Big, basically. Same options, you wanna make sure you save as layers and embed the color profile. Now you can save all of your documents as PSB, that's totally okay. It's mostly used when your files are over two gigabytes in file size. PSDs will not work in that situation. Also keep in mind that a PSB is only openable in Photoshop. Lightroom won't even read these files. Only Photoshop will know what's inside a PSB. So it's a little bit more limiting as well. So let's go ahead and save out our PSB, hit okay, and we're good to go. Our last file format that will save layered files is known as a TIFF. And this is actually the industry standard, and here's why. You don't need Photoshop to open a TIFF. It's readable by most operating systems. So Windows and Mac OS will actually natively read a TIFF. So if you're working with clients, TIFF is a great option. And again, it can work in place of a PSD or a PSB. So let's go ahead and save out with a TIFF. We'll go to File, down to Save As, and here in our format, we're gonna choose all the way down at the bottom, TIFF. There we go. Now with our TIFF, we do wanna make sure the layers are intact and we're gonna embed the color profile and you can see it's gonna go in the same folder, layered files and file formats.tiff. Let's hit save. 
Now we do have some options for compression. I highly recommend choosing no compression, okay? We want our pixel order to be uh, the first option here. Byte order is gonna be Macintosh and layer compression is RLE. All these settings are standard and I recommend using these standard settings. Let's hit okay. There we go. It says including layers will increase file size. I think we all know that. I'm gonna hit don't show again. We'll hit okay. And there we go. We've saved out our TIFF. So all of these three file formats will save your layered files. So I've just saved. Let's go ahead and close this document. Controller command W to close that out. It's like, oh no. Well, not really because we have all of our information. We just saved it. Let's go ahead and open up all three of those formats and see what we can do with them. In Photoshop, let's double click here. I'm gonna click on all three formats and we're gonna hit open and it's gonna open all three independently. So let's just make sure we zoom out. I'm gonna get rid of my, there we go. And we're gonna zoom out on this one as well. So here we have our, let's just do them in order. This is our PSD, this is our PSB, and this is our TIFF. So you can see with each of these, I have my different layers and my different groups. Everything is completely intact. All of my layers are completely active. All of my groups are completely active and my animations will be active as well. We'll go down to window and over to timeline. And here we can see in our TIFF, we can hit play on our animation. There we go. Our PSB, we can hit play on our animation. And here in our PSD, we can hit play on our animation as well. So all three formats will work. Keep in mind that PSD and PSB are only openable by Photoshop. TIFF is the industry standard because it can be opened by any program. When it comes to saving, it's always recommended you save your layered file. It allows you to get back and make changes to your document without having to start over again. Now, these are not the files that you're gonna be uploading to the web. These are your files that you're gonna keep to work on if you need. Next, we're gonna look into files that you're gonna to upload to the web, specifically JPEG, GIF, and PNG. Starting with JPEG, this is the most common file format, and this is how most images on the web are rendered. You can send JPEGs out to print, you can send JPEGs to your client, and you can put these on the web. The reason they're great is they compress all of your layers and create a smaller file size than a layered file will, not to mention they'll work properly on the web. You can't upload a PSD to Instagram, for instance, and have it render. It has to be a format that the web can read. So my preferred method for saving JPEGs is to go to File, down to Export, and over to Save for Web. In our Save for Web dialog, we have a few options. At the very top, we have our file format. In this case, we're going to choose JPEG. Now with our JPEG, let's simply zoom out so we can see what our image is going to look like. JPEGs do not support animation. This is just a still file. Now here in our JPEG options, we have a quality slider. I can increase my quality, which will make our image look a little bit better. I can decrease our quality. There we go, which will make our image look a little worse. Now let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at the difference. So a quality of 100, will look like this. And you can see your preview here. A quality of zero will look like this. And they're actually not that different. And the reason is because JPEGs do a great job compressing your file size. Now, the big difference here, you'll notice, when I have my quality at 100, my file size is three megabytes, 3.05 megabytes, which is a pretty large file for loading on the web. Now, if as I bring my quality down to zero, we're at 270 kilobytes. This is about a 10th of the file size as having the quality at 100. So it's a great way to compress your files to save size on the internet, which means for instance, on your personal website, your files will load faster. My suggestion here is not to put your quality at zero. You may start to see some artifacts. My suggestion is to keep your quality right about 70. It's a great medium, which will keep your file size, normally cut it about in half, and it still will preserve most of your quality. Now, the next setting we wanna make sure we check, and this is checked by default, is to convert to sRGB. The reason is that web browsers use the color space sRGB to properly render color. 
If you've ever uploaded an image to the internet and the colors weren't exactly right, chances were it was not in sRGB color space. So this save for web dialog will automatically convert to sRGB, making your images look perfect on the internet. The last thing we can do in this dialog is resize our image if we'd like. For instance, our width is at 2900 and our height is at 3600. This is a pretty large image. Let's go ahead and resize this. I'm gonna make my width 800 pixels. Let's hit enter there. And that looks probably about the size we'll put it on the web. You know what, we'll make it a little bit larger. We'll go to 1200 pixels. Perfect. Now, my last favorite option here within this dialog is this preview button on the bottom left. If I click on the preview button, it will actually load this image in an internet browser and it will show you exactly what it will look like on the internet. So this is the ex exact size that it will render and you can see we have the dimensions, the size here, the quality, all of our information and you can visually see exactly what it's going to look like. So when saving files out for the web, it's really great to have a preview. Now everything looks great with our JPEG. Back in Photoshop, let's go in and hit save and we're gonna go to another folder that we're calling files for web, and this is gonna be fileformats.jpg. Okay, there we go, and hit save. We are good to go. So a JPEG is perfect for viewing still files on the web. Next, we wanna save out an animation. We wanna show the cactuses actually moving, and this is where the file format GIF comes in. So we're gonna to go to the same dialog. Let's go to file, down to export, over to save for web, and here where we have our setting, I'm gonna to go to GIF. There we go. Now with our GIF, let's go ahead and resize this again. We're gonna make this 800 pixels in width. And the thing that I love about this dialog is we have our animation settings right here. So we can choose our looping options. We can have this play once or forever. I can hit this play button and we can actually see the animation in real time. So that's what it's going to look like. Let's hit the stop icon. I'm gonna hit preview and we're gonna be able to see this in our web browser. And there we go, it looks super cute on a newsletter or a little display ad, I love it. Now it is a little bit large in dimension a little bit and let's go back to Photoshop and we can see this image is 427 kilobytes which is almost half a megabyte and that's a lot of information to load. So let's just make our image smaller. Now the best way to save your file size when saving out an animated GIF is to simply make your dimensions smaller. So with our dimensions, we're gonna take our width and let's try 400 here. There we are. And let's hit this preview button. So we can see we've got our animation. This time, our file size is 131 kilobytes as opposed to before where it was 427 kilobytes. So if you don't need your image to be large, it's better to save it out at a lower dimension because that's going to save your file size as well and make sure your image loads faster on the web. Now we do have some additional settings for saving out our GIFs. Here we have our color reduction algorithm. I recommend using Perceptual. It always looks good and it tends to reduce your file size just a little bit. Next we have our dither algorithm. We have a few different options here. My suggestion is to use diffusion. Dither is basically how GIFs handle colors and gradations. The reason we can save out GIFs and keep them in low file sizes is that they're limited to a certain amount of colors. And in this case, you can see we're limited to 256 colors. Okay, you can actually decrease the amount of colors in your image. Let's just zoom in a little bit. I can continue to decrease this down, but <laughs> obviously at two, there we go. At four, you're gonna see something like this. As a plus, we have a really low file size. As a minus, it really doesn't look that real. So we'll keep this at 256, which will work well for most situations. I do recommend keeping transparency on. It will tend to lower your file size. And of course, we want this to convert to sRGB, so it'll display properly on the web. Last, all we have to do is hit save. We're gonna put it in the same exact file, fileformats.gif or .gif. I know there's a little bit of a controversy out there. Let's hit save and there we are. The last thing we're gonna look at is saving out one of these cactuses with a transparent background. Let's say you wanna put a logo on a website or you wanna create a button with a transparent background. The best file format for this is a PNG. Very common on the web when you need your background to be invisible. 
Let's go into our document here. I'm going to just choose one of our cactuses. This looks great. I'm going to right click and we're going to go to duplicate layer. Now I'm going to choose to duplicate this into a new document. Let's hit OK. And here we can see our cactuses on a new document with a transparent background. Now in this case, I don't need the layer effects. So we're going to simply click and drag the layer effects to the trash can. There we go. Let's hit Control or Command T and straighten up our cactus a little bit. Next, I'm going to grab the crop tool. C for the crop tool, and we're going to make a square crop right around our cactus. There we go. And zooming into 100% looks pretty cute. Let's say we wanted this to be the logo for our website or maybe your avatar with a transparent background. You could put this on the web with a black background, a white background, any color, and it's still going to look great because the background is transparent. So to be clear, a JPEG will not allow you to save with a transparent background. For that, I highly recommend using a PNG. Back in Photoshop, we'll go to File, down to Export, and Save for Web. Same dialog. Now here we have a few options for PNG. We have PNG 8, which limits your colors to 256. So if you're working with a very simple logo, PNG 8 can be good because it will have a slightly lower file size. In most cases, I recommend using a PNG 24, which will not limit the amount of colors. Meaning if you have many colors in your image, your image will retain all of its original color detail. In this case, we're using PNG 24. You wanna make sure that transparency is checked. After all, that's the whole reason we're using a PNG here. And I wanna make sure to convert to sRGB so my colors will display properly on the web. You can also change your image size. And in this case, this looks great. Let's go ahead and click on our preview option. And here we can see it looks perfectly on a white background. And because we have transparency, it'll look great on any color background you decide to put this on. Back in Photoshop, let's go to save. And we're going to save it in the same file. We're going to choose file formats. There we go. Dot PNG and hit save. And there we have it. All of the most commonly used file formats in Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching this episode and hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this episode, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We'll send you free Photoshop tutorials every single week. Make sure to save out your layered files, which can be a PSD or a PSB or a TIFF, which is industry standard. And make sure to save out your files for web or print. JPEG is going to be the most versatile. If you need an animation, be sure to choose a GIF. And if you need transparency, PNG is the way to go. Have a great Wednesday for whatever day you're watching. It's Wednesday for me. Have a great just rest of your life. <laughs> I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. Have a great Wednesday. If today's not Wednesday, be sure to come back on a Wednesday and watch this video so I'm not wrong. <laughs> In the bag. In the bag. <laughs>